Hi guys! Tomorrow the insulation that's going to form the fridge inside of the kitchen island here is supposed to show up. So hopefully I can get started building the fridge in this video. Today is Wednesday and I've already gotten a few items checked off the old to-do list. Monday and Tuesday the weather was really nice so I got another couple of layers of fairing compound applied to the deck hall joint. It's slowly starting to come along but it's supposed to rain later today so no more fairing fun. I also got the two granny bars mounted up on deck. I used the classic drill fill drill method and a bit of butyl tape so those should remain leak free for a very long time. Next I decided to do something about the hatch in the cockpit. One of the previous owners had attempted some kind of repair that didn't quite work out. After a not unsubstantial amount of oh glorious sanding I applied a single layer of fiberglass to the top of the hatch to stabilize the surface. To build up a new rounded corner on the bottom forward edge I placed the hatch on some plywood wrapped in plastic and used a small piece of larch to give me something to lay up glass against. This is what the hatch looks like the day after. Before I started laying up glass I put down a fillet of epoxy thickened with 407. I did that for two reasons. For one fiberglass doesn't like sharp corners. It's very difficult to get this stuff into sharp 90 degree corners. And also I will need to round over this edge to match the other edges. Let's start by removing this little bit of excess fiberglass here and see if we can't beautify this thing. I think this thing is gonna look basically as good as new when I'm done with it. Now I didn't lay up glass over these small holes here in the sandwich, I just filled them with a bit of epoxy thickened with 406. I basically just needed a way of sealing up these holes, there's no need to add a bunch of strength here. Now the reason I laid up glass back here is because those holes are where the hinges are gonna attach and the old holes had kind of warped and grown bigger over the years. While I'm waiting for that epoxy to cure, let's move on to another mini project, Athena's mast foot. This thing has gotten a little warped over the years. As you can see here, it is no longer flat. The best explanation I can come up as to why this has happened is the fact that there used to be a teak deck on the deck and the teak that was underneath this might have compressed a little bit over the years and that is why we've got this situation. As you might be able to see it is bent right here at the weakest point. Now I've already reached out to Selden, they no longer manufacture this specific mast foot. These went out of production in 2014 and they have none of these in stock. That might be for the best, this has marine written all over it so it's guaranteed to be hyper expensive. I think my best option here is just to see if I can get this nice and flat again. I've made myself four little oak spacers here. Now the plan is to chuck the mass foot in the oven and heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. This is cast aluminum so it's not really in its nature to want to bend. But yeah, well let's see if this works out. Heiss, 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 heiss. I am gonna go ahead and call this a resounding success. This thing is flat as can be. Now that this guy is nice and flat, I can go ahead and get the uh, bolts for through bolting this through the deck I need ordered. And then when those show up in a few days, well then we can get this installed. And that's another mini project I can check off the list. The epoxy here on my little hatch is not quite cured enough yet. So uh, let's move on to another mini project. This is one of Athena's old chain plates and I've decided to replace all of them. And this is one of the new much beefier ones. As you might be able to see the surface finish on the new chain plates leaves a little bit to be desired. But that's okay, that means I get a chance to practice my polishing. I've picked up an obscene amount of flappy polishing discs. These are about 10 bucks a piece so there's a small fortune in flappy discs here. This is the coarsest one, medium, 
fine, and then we move into this stuff over here. Let's throw in the obligatory disclaimer. I am not a professional at this. What I'm doing here might be completely ass backwards, but I think I can get a nice finish on this, or at least nice enough for me. Waiting for the hummingbirds to fly by Sitting peacefully This is definitely a learning experience for me. Here you can see the before and here is the after. But this after is not perfect. You can see some marks from the belt center running this way and also a few going this way from one of the discs. So I definitely need to spend more time with each of the discs. I've done a couple of the chain plates, but my fingers are starting to tingle. So I think I'll take a little break from this. I just brought the hatch up into the cockpit to do a little test fit and it looks pretty dang good. I was a little worried I'd have to trim this edge here, but Everything looks okay. Even though this edge here still needs a lick of fairing compound before it's truly done, if you compare this to the hatch before the repair, I think we're already looking a lot better. And this is also a lot stronger than it was before, so I think this is a good repair. Last night I finished polishing most of the chain plates. I still have two left to do, but I'm out of coarse flabby discs, so that's gonna have to wait. As with most things, the more you do them, the better you get at them. And I think some of the last chain plates actually turned out pretty good. Today is gonna be yet another rainy day, so I can't work on the deck hall joint, but I've got some options for other things to keep me entertained. I could take apart and service all of the winches. I could also put up foam strips here in the aft cabin so that I'm ready to put up wooden slats once Athena goes back in the water. Or I could spend hours grinding oh glorious fiberglass here in the aft cockpit locker to prep the surfaces for paint. Today is a nice cool day and it would be good to get all of this fiberglass grinding out of the way before we run into some kind of heat wave. I might as well remove the swim ladder while I'm at it. I'm gonna have to do that anyways before I paint the top sides. I cannot put into words how unpleasant this is gonna be, but I wanna get this done before it starts raining so I can reconnect the cockpit drains. That was a microphone failure. I use these Movie Maker kits from Rode. They are pretty good, but they only seem to last a little over a year, at least for me. And uh, yeah, they're 400 bucks, so I really wish Rode would do a better job on these. But at least an upside to them failing that often is that I know they're gonna fail, so I just keep an extra one in a corner here about Athena, waiting for the inevitable thing to happen. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get started cleaning those winches. Before the mic failed, I did finish sanding inside of the cockpit locker, so I can also check that off of the to-do list. I have no idea when the previous owner last serviced these, so yeah, we'll uh, see what we're in for here. Oof, well, this is definitely gonna be worth the time. I had an idea these might be a little bit grimy, so I picked up a big jug of brake cleaner fluid, so uh, let's get to scrubbing. those two Lumar 43 winches taken apart. There's one over here and one over here. Now I'm gonna have to leave them like this for a few days because I didn't wanna order the service kits before I'd opened them up and seen what was inside. Fortunately, there weren't any big surprises hiding in here, although there are a couple of the teeth here that are damaged but I think that's gonna be okay. I don't think these plastic bushings here are part of the service kit. I think it's just these flappy bits here and the tiny little springs 
but it would be good to replace those before I put everything back together again. For the sake of simplicity, I've got no less than four different sizes of winches here aboard Athena. There are two of those 43s, there's a single 40, there's a single 24, and then there are two 16s. That is all of the winches taken apart and thoroughly cleaned. As soon as I have those service kits, I can go ahead and get all of them assembled again. Until then, I really hope we don't get an earthquake. This should be the bolts and nuts I ordered for the mast foot. So hopefully we can get that installed too. These are 60 millimeters long. They should be long enough, but just to be on the safe side, I also ordered some 100 millimeter long ones. In the beginning of the week, I filled these holes with thickened epoxy, and as you can see, it's a little bit proud of the surface, so before I do anything else, I wanna knock that back down. And it looks like the holes still line up, so that's very fortunate. I've cleaned up the corrosion on the bottom of this and I've applied butyl tape to the heads of each of the bolts. This might look like a jumbled mess right now, but once this gets tightened down, all of this butyl is going to squeeze together to one big blob of butyl. I'm just going to add a little bit more and then we can go ahead and get this installed. One important little detail is that it's best if the bolts can remain stationary while you're tightening things down. If they turn, then they're going to squeeze out too much of the butyl. I've secured the bolt up on top so it doesn't move, so now I just need to tighten the nuts. And that is yet another mini project checked off the to-do list. I've just applied a lick of fairing compound to the hatch here, both on the inside to make sure I get a nice flat surface so that the little rubber strip I'm gonna put in there is gonna get a nice bond. And hopefully that rubber strip will make sure that it's a nice watertight seal. When I removed the peel ply from the top of the hatch, there was a little bit of a texture to the surface. That always happens. And just to get rid of that, I just applied a little bit of fairing compound to the outside of the hatch too. All this needs now is a quick bit of sanding tomorrow and it should be ready for paint. I've dug out the old pulpit and the push pit to see if I can reuse those after the modifications I made to the deck. But uh, there was a little bit of a surprise hiding here. After much pulling, I got this off of here and uh, well, look at this mess. There's no way of knowing for sure what happened here, but there was a section cut out and then a smaller diameter tube shoved inside of this. But then if you look down here, here, there's a repair here, and this should have been a straight piece of tube, but as you can see, there's a slight curve to it, a curve that looks like it might actually match that middle section. So I'm wondering if someone took a piece out of the middle of this and just used it for repair here. It looks like this thing is just wrapped in electrical tape and shoved in here. This is such an odd repair. I've found some pretty janky repairs aboard Athena over the years and I'm not saying this is the worst, but it's definitely on the list. I'm gonna leave this jankiness here in place for now, then I'll grab some measurements and order a little section of tube. Next week, I'm gonna try and weld that in place. I'm not sure how good that's gonna look, but it's definitely gonna look better than this mess. If I can replace that middle section and maybe this oddly curved repair over here, and there's also a little bit of the damage down here, but if I can replace those things, I think I might be able to reuse this. The good news is that with a very slight modification, I should be able to reuse the pulpit. It's official, it's Saturday morning and the installation for the fridge is definitely not gonna show up this week. That is annoying because I was counting on the fridge being a big part of this video, but it's okay. I still got a lot of other good stuff checked off the list. For instance, last night I built these two drawer boxes. 
<laughs> These are nothing fancy. They're just a pair of plywood drawer boxes. I didn't shoot a lot of video while building them. I think I have another video where I go over how I build these. But the, the small one is gonna be for cutlery. The big one is gonna be for flour, pasta, and stuff like that. After I'd applied thickened epoxy to all of the joints, I just taped everything together with a bit of masking tape. I can get away with that because this is thickened epoxy and not regular wood glue, so I don't need a lot of clamping force. But uh, let's haul these up aboard Athena. That is a nice snug fit. Now I just need some drawer fronts to beautify this. A while back, I made this little prototype here for a drawer front and there were some issues with lining up the router bits and stuff like that. But uh, let me grab some measurements and I can take a second stab at some drawer fronts. I'm not sure I've got enough wood to do it, but it would also be nice to build the doors for this area here because that would keep dust out of there. And I've already got these little hinges here picked out. So uh, yeah, let's uh, grab those measurements and take a stab at it. These things are really starting to come along. I've got the three drawer fronts right here and the two doors for the area underneath the sink right here. Pay absolutely no attention to the pile of freaking kindling back here. This is another complete set of drawer fronts that I completely messed up. The Cheapomatic 2000 here is, to be honest, a steaming pile of shite. This thing belongs at the dump. As you've seen, I'm using a set of rail and style router bits, and those require a little bit of precision, which this thing, this router table, is not good at. I'm having a lot of issues with repeatability. I can't get a consistent result. If I put one part through, it'll come out fine. The next part will be screwed up. This thing is, well, horrible. It probably has something to do with the fact that this thing is made out of mainly MDF and plastic. If I push on the plastic here, I can actually see it move. I can see it give. Life is too short for cheap router tables. To fill the center of these, I was planning on using some of this lighter colored wood. This is the same species of wood I've used for the laminated beam in the cabin and some of the other trim. But it turns out I don't have enough of this stuff here to finish all of these. That's annoying because I can't get more of this stuff until Monday. And I was kind of hoping that these would be the big finish to this video, seeing as I couldn't show you guys the fridge because of the missing insulation. So yeah, I'm kind of left without an ending here. I guess that just means that next week's video is going to be chock full of endings because, well, I should be able to finish this on Monday and then I'm assuming the insulation for the fridge is gonna show up so we can get that built. Also the hatch is ready for primer and paint. So yeah, lots of good stuff in next week's video. The deck hull joint is gonna remain my top priority because I wanna get the hull painted as quick as I possibly can because who knows if it's gonna be a super wet summer. Fortunately, I've still got another two weeks off of my day job and I'm really hoping I'll be able to get the hull painted in those two weeks. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, see. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.